All right, cool. What are you doing this time? Well, Gary, uh, we are here in the wrestling ring that I bought for the backyard of my estate. Oh, yeah, big backyard wrestling. Yeah, it's mo- it's it's mostly just a, a trampoline with some chicken wire around it. But mm-hmm. yeah, what I figured we would do. Um, I've got this fishbowl full of just random words. Um, okay. you, you know, one of my favorite things about any kind of fight sport is that, you know, every person has either a wrestler name or boxers have, you know, oh, I'm the, I'm, I'm the, I'm the Boise mutilator. I'm you know? kid chubby. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. Kid, 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 mo. Kid, kid, kid. overweight. <laughs> That's me. Okay. Yeah. Kid, kid, call, uh, call the ambulance in advance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I figured I'd pull some of these out and, uh, we would, uh, we, uh, we would figure out the game from that. Uh, and I have somebody waiting out on the wings to come out with a game that is related to what I call out. So we're going to do like a little entrance there. Oh, they, they fight. Oh, okay. God. I was really wondering where this wrestling was coming in because no. you had a perfectly good fishbowl randomization going. Yeah. <laughs> you well, just killed it the lily. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't think we've done a fishbowl. No, which no. It's pretty weird. I, you know, a lot of episodes. <laughs> Before we just like drew something from a hat. Yeah. Well, I think I think we've done I think we've done a hat before. I think we've done just like a regular bowl before. Let's get to start getting to different kinds of containers. Mm, yeah. It's still yeah. technically new. Yeah. Uh, it's new to um, me. Damn it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I will. Uh, uh, so I'll pull one. And okay. uh, you or no? I, I need to I'll pull. Just be I, fucking chopped liver. I'll just hang out. Yeah, <laughs> you can do this. You can do this randomization without me, man. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm I, watching pull I, something from a bowl. It I, sounds pretty. Cool. I des- I designed this in ten seconds before we started. Um, all right. Okay. So I'll, I'll pull one, and then you pull the other and hand it to me. Okay. Uh, sure. Thank, thanks for throwing me a bone. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. There you are. Uh, let's see here. The first word is concept. Okay. And the second word is kid. Oh, c- concept kid. That might be a, a name of a wrestler. Or a... Mm-hmm. Well, let's let, let's try. Uh, so let's pump up. Y'all ready for this? Um, okay. And I'm going to say the name and our, our friend will come out with the game that is related to this. Okay. Okay. That sounds right. good. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on the east side of the ring we have the Concept Kid. Na 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 na. On the east side of the ring. Oh, hey, it's our friend Andrew. I I regret to inform you that Kid Concept is actually not going to be available for this thing. He's been intercepted by the incredibly litigious enemy of your past, the true Concept Kid, Matt Dickey. Oh, oh no! Uh-huh. Oh, I'm Dicky. Uh-huh. Not again. Fuck my Dicky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Hey, hey, how's, hey, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, this, uh, my name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole uh, Ross. <laughs> Subject suffering. The show. Oh, I, I, I did, I just cut you off like a real douchebag. We're, we're just, I'm just going to go with it though. Cause I, I didn't mean to. I just, sure. We play that game so you don't have to. Why are you yeah. doing this to us? Andrew, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. I'm sorry for inflicting this upon you. <laughs> no, it Why is. Why are you doing this to us? It is, it is within the spirit. It is, it is what we have asked for. Uh, Andrew is uh, one of our uh, very generous patrons. This is, uh, this is his guest episode here. And uh, for this, uh, what he is apologizing for is making us play the M. Dickey game under development. Mm-hmm. Yes. M. Dickey is officially out of control. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's he's a uh, he's back, baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why uh why why this uh why this game and why why this M. Dickey game specifically? More specifically, it was because it was the one you mentioned that you would consider doing in the previous episode. Generally, <laughs> I I never actually played this one before. It just seemed on brand. My experience with M. Dickey goes back years, unfortunately. Oh, I want to hear that. I'm, 
maybe the closest thing to an expert on his horrific games as possible. But... <laughs> Yay! Yeah. I really wish I had. I really wish I hadn't given my real name before saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're on some kind of very specific list of one. <laughs> yeah. there, there, there's a, there's a floppy disk with a one k text file that's just your name <laughs> somewhere in this world because of it's that. A 256 by 256 really pixelated photo of my face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that icon. Um, the, um, yeah, so you knew about... Because uh, we we uh, discovered M. Dickey. He's the man behind the U-Testament. Yes. Uh, that, that, um, that was where he broke big. Before hmm. that, he had a series of pretty awful simulation games and wrestling games. And... One thing I would point out to this is at the very least he's removed his weird nudity from games now, so that's something. <laughs> it shows growth. It shows... It's because he's in mainstream it, now. Yeah. It, it used to be when you were creating a character, one of the hip options was perfectly skin coloured at the back and really horrific low res pubic hair at the front. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. at, at least he's progressed beyond that, so yeah, that's growth as a artist right yeah yeah well it's it's for realism's sake because he is trying to make the most comprehensive representation of what it is like to work in the video games industry and a lot not a lot of people are walking around pub, pubes first mm. uh, in, no. in in games so he had to sacrifice for his art like i did not done a tour of the EA, ea campus cole and it's a lot of like reverse chaps <laughs> Like it's it's a uh, you say that but there, there's a lot of natural merkin going on like just uh, letting it go full age of Aquarius until it functions as underwear. Mm, yeah, you know it's a, yeah, it's it's like a creature from the Shadowgate monster, not Shadowgate Shadowrun monster manual. Yeah, yeah. it's a, lo- a lot of penumbras running mm. around um, <laughs> the, uh, around the EA campus. So yeah, oh. yeah, you gotta watch out. We call those uh, macro transactions. <laughs> uh, I, uh, the so maybe he stopped doing that nudity because he became a father. Did he become um, a did... father? I know he became yeah. a crazy, a wacky, inscrutable politics, religious educator of some description. But he did like it was. I feel like that's where we left him in the last episode. We were like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, he wrote this this book called "A Fearism: The Ignorance of Atheism," oh, which I totally found a PDF of. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Just, uh, do, in reading the book, can you figure out a way that a reason why he didn't try to make something that rhymed? I, or I think was it, a it's, it's just a working title that clearly just stuck because he thought it was really clever. <laughs> a, <Yeah>. a fearism. <laughs> yeah, thankfully I did not read the whole thing. I opened it and thought this is going to be really funny. I'm going to read it and make notes for these guys. And I read one page, and it's like intolerable internet atheist, <laughs> but flipped. It's just exactly the same tone. And I was like, oh god, I don't want to read this voluntarily. Yeah, like an analog version, a version where you can't like flip away to other windows. Oh, that sounds really yeah. Rough. Yeah. Um, well, I, I wanna... At least there's no comments in the book, though. That would be horrifying. <laughs> yeah, comments or or uh, front facing nudity. <laughs> like you know, not just like every other page is pixelated pubes. Um, yeah. I, what... No, no, so, no so last... kicker balls, just pubes. <laughs> yeah. Just, the uh, the uh, uh, oh, that, that's a weird. I, I mean, I guess they're just like women, but like the, the, like as a as a visual. But um... yeah, that, that's horrifying. Maybe, maybe cut that. That's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I, I, the uh, since the last time we recorded, um, I want to draw everyone's attention to an Ars Technica article, uh, "The Rise, Fall, and Rise of M. Dickey, or How to Be the Best Worst Game Developer" by uh, Chris Stokel Walker, uh, done this year, uh, made in January. And this is how I found out he, uh, you know, so he when we last left M. Dickey, he uh, his games weren't selling very well, and he was uh, prepared to have a, a start his family. And he's buying his first house. And his wife said, you can make one more crack at doing games. Uh, but if you don't make it this time, you're, you have to give up for sure. Uh, and he started doing mobile games. And did you know that his uh, he has a wrestling game on mobile that has like 50 million downloads? That is like an incredibly popular mobile game uh, called uh, something wrestling 3D, World Wrestling 3D. Oh, that's one that's on his front page. I, I don't know if it's on his, his – this website is good. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell what's going on in it. Um, but he, start, he started doing mobile games, and he's a big success now. At least 50 million downloads for Wrestling Revolution 3D. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that game sells on Steam for like 9 bucks and on sale and has almost entirely favorable reviews. Like this guy makes money now. Weird. And Dickie is, is, is back, baby. Give, I mean, given that, given that he – 
made his like like he like he he made his reputation by making stuff for free and just kind of positing himself as an auteur. That's very depressing because I'm not generally a fan of the fake it till you make it the power, you know, like just just yeah. by sheer willpower and, you know, self marketing, you end up mm. You know. Well, his games didn't used to be free. They used to all, you used to have to buy them all. They've only recently become free, presumably when he gave up. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, that makes because sense. Because there's one, there's one set that I definitely because I, I I wasn't gonna I did pay him money at one point, but I'm not yeah. gonna go down that road again. So I was glad to see <laughs> these were all free whenever I went down. <laughs> his uh yeah the the super popular one is not free. I wanted to try it, but I was like, oh, you want how much money for yeah. for this? Like this is still an M Dicky wrestling game yeah and it's yeah. Like, it still seems but, like it would be bad based on everything else that i've seen but i guess i've never played one of his wrestling games i just I you know, did many many years ago are they are, was, th are they good I, I sort of played that they were very rudimentary but the sort of selling point was that there was an editor where you could basically do whatever you wanted with them All so right. it would be like sports games without licenses where you would have a really obvious wrestler called like the stone and it's clearly just Dwayne Johnson and then you would just go in yourself and mm. do that. So that that was the appeal over the sort of console games. But mm. again, inscrutable politics. In some of his wrestling games you can make your wrestler come out as gay. Oh, okay. Which seems like that yes, he will handle this tastefully, I'm sure. Yeah. And when your wrestler comes out as gay, their opponent reprimands them because they were gay before it was cool. And the referee pipes in with I'm the gay referee. So, <laughs> That, that's making some kind of point to someone and i don't i'm trying to figure out what stance is behind that it's impossible you know? to tell all his stances yeah. are like this is like it seems like it's going one way and then it just takes a hard left and you're like what is yeah. even happening yeah and, and like the, the thing is because of his demeanor and the way like everything that i have read from him and just everything everything that he has presented to the world he does not get the benefit of the doubt no <laughs> like he, he, no. he presents as like a animate as like a sentient tap out shirt yeah, <laughs> like That's probably pretty accurate. Like, it's how he presents to me. Like, how many people can we say have given us the opportunity to play a game where we design Pitfall with the assistance of Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Although yeah, when yeah. I tried to hire Michael Jackson in this game, he told me that I should be working for him, not the other way around. Well, that makes okay. sense. Probably true. That's probably true. probably true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't yeah. imagine what use Michael Jackson would have for an astronomer, but I'm sure he could have found one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. So I, did, I I was not so did, lucky as to get Michael Jackson to stop by, but John Romero did come by and offer to teach me how to program. Yeah, I had Mr. T sold me a game, or at least I assume it was supposed to be Mr. T. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm only playing this until I get to release a game, and it was taking forever. Yeah. And I'll admit that if I could get things done in my day job by just playing Snake, sure, but I don't want to have to do it as part of a game. <laughs> no, so so we. We should we should billboard this a little bit and at least describe yeah, what under development yeah. is, and that way we can get into how presumptuous and lazy this actually is. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. And and how big of how genius uh, M. Dickey thinks it is. Ooh, yeah. Like his he essay that he wrote on his page is really something. Mm -hmm. So, um, under development, it is a game where you, it's like a management game, strategy game where you are developing video games and uh, you, you know you have different stats think like game to game dev story but with terrible 3d graphics for no reason at all um <laughs> and also to improve different aspects of your uh, of your game you play mini games and you think okay uh what is this going to be that seems time consuming and awkward and yes it is because every single mini game is just another game most likely played on a cell phone so snake asteroids um, one that I think is modeled after the Oregon Trail shooting, but it's all very bare bones and uses assets from other stuff, specifically the, Nintendo. The shooting yeah. one, the the one that you said is, is based on, well, there's the one that's the target shooting. Yeah. Um, Deadshot or whatever, the one where you control two different uh, snipers or whatever on other sides of the screen. Oh, yeah? Was like, I've never seen a game that's that. Like, it was really weird where I was like, did M. Dickey find a mechanic I haven't like seen before <laughs> so like th that one is really interesting like it's two different shooters at the same on either side of the screen and there's a stream of assets and when we say assets in this like we literally mean it there's no you play tetris where like you have tetris blocks made out of goombas <laughs> you know like super mario world very specific goombas like it's very uh very yeah. assety 
Yeah. Um, he had five but, JPEGs, and that's all he was using. There's no more than this. <laughs> I, I had a real, like, rueful guffaw when I was doing the Tetris one, and they were all the just different assets, and then just a Tetris block came down. And I was like, <laughs> you, you got a fucking Tetris block, man. <laughs> do it. Um, but the, uh, uh, this thing where you're shooting each other, and then these things come down in the middle path, so you have to time your shots on both sides huh. so you don't shoot each other. Like, it's, it's, if, you, if you miss an asset, you hit the other person, and that's how you lose points. Yeah. And this, I was like, this, this would have been a good, like, Atari game, and I've never, I've never seen this. So it's like an Atari-level mechanic that I just haven't seen in a game. No, I never yeah, saw that. This is a past game of his. I think there was possibly a 3D one at one point. I can't imagine how that would play. Ooh. But he he definitely made a Star Wars version of it at one point, which has now been scrubbed from his website. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the man is keeping him down. Yeah, because there's something else that's been scrubbed from his website, but we should get to that at the end, I guess, because that's pretty standalone from the rest of it. <laughs> mm. oh. um, the, the way this, when you say like it, it's a, so you have stats like a, a game dev story kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. you sit down and you go to different, like, uh, so it's, it's kind of like a lemonade stand thing. I kept not being able to, to act like to do in, in my various situations. Like I would go like, okay, like I'm going to work on a uh, design and I would go to design. And I just wouldn't have any options. It would just show my stat screen. There's some and, kind of stamina bar, which isn't really very clear. And if it gets down too low, you can't do anything more. So it seemed like you yeah. could only really do one thing a week and then you had to do yeah, you get to sleep for the rest of the week. So, <laughs> yeah. you know. it's like I've played Asteroids all day and I'm bushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a very accurate depiction of depression. How about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm sure that people who make games like say like, yeah, I get tired making games too. Like, I get it. Yeah, I also I'm don't sure. play a super fun game. I, I, I don't like. That's not my problem. I'm trying to play this video game. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do the, the papers, please of game development like somebody else make yeah. that not again not tap out deluxe <laughs> did, did you notice any of the splash screens when you go into play any of the games and you choose like i'm going to work on design <laughs> the one that comes up for design is there's two blobs sort of around a box and it says above them seduce <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, which, which one of these two like somehow freestanding ovaries do I, do I want to go on a date with <laughs> free state. like like uh mr when dr manhattan has all of his uh his layers taken down so he like goes down to skin to muscle to nervous system. Yeah. at some point that just happens to mrs manhattan who could also be a doctor you know uh, we've all heard that riddle and uh and it's just two freestanding ovaries that kind of like float around and you know <laughs> just, you just just to just to demonstrate that she's fertile as some kind of courtship ritual yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and just to be like enticing. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Look at these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, just saw like all of those screens. So the the idea that this is, you know, like by default you started in 1981. Um and <laughs> all of this text on his page says, "Oh, this is the most accurate. This captures the spirit. It's what it was really like to be there." The technology on your desktop doesn't really change. So like when I'm sitting down with a full on like wave editor in 1981, for some reason that really bugs me and strikes me as being very very lazy on his part. Yeah. Like he put a lot yeah. of effort into like, "Oh, this is going to be in 3D and everything is going to have basically just my wrestling game engine and characters and stuff." Uh, but I'm also not going to uh, actually change anything for these different eras, but then try and convince people that it is. I, just, I think he just mm. has this one engine that he just sticks to. Because otherwise, why in the New Testament would you, if you're making a religious game, why can we sword fight? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah just yeah. so his wrestlers can do their wrestler moves. That's... Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, you know, admittedly, as much as I hate, you know, that that's kind of blessed. Oh yeah, as just mm. as just a construct or rea- thing about reality, <laughs> you know. So yeah. Oh, well, I, I also like the amount of uh, just customizability that you have because my character definitely wore a tank top, but also had t-shirt sleeves just kind of hanging from nothing on his upper <laughs> arms, <laughs> freestanding like you know bicep warmers. Yep, it's like yeah. something out of Zardoz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's some wonderful stock image tattoos in there as well. You can get the the, the Pepsi logo and a giant pair of lips. I was like, yeah. what, what? Did you just Google tattoos and just like that one, that one, and that one? <laughs> I want to be, I want to have a Pepsi tattoo. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to forcibly give you a Pepsi tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> the um, 
So, like you, you just like you just made that wish, and like I, I've definitely taken note. So, you know? <laughs> so, so somewhere a monkey's paw hand just curls yeah, up all five at a time. Wishmaster reporting for duty. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna start adding that. So I, I, I told you we we recorded WAF 200 recently, and I told you my two catchphrases I'm working on. Uh, you know, I only remember, remember the one. I only remember cl- uh, uh, clam it. So clam it is is one of them. Uh, another one is a, uh, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, is another one. And I've been working uh, on some other ones, and I'm gonna add Wishmaster reporting for duty. <laughs> <laughs> that's three. Uh, the fourth one I had, I've been I've been working on is a. Uh, I guess that's living. Uh, and then the fifth one is neighbor like when something good happens, and just trying to think of like you know you you're a neighbor and maybe a Tim the Tool Tam- Man Taylor kind of situation, and uh, like let's say you know there's a lost cat, okay, and and uh, the person who lives next to you like listed on next door. Uh-huh. You just like pop for the fence. You're like neighbor like, <laughs> and then you go back down under the fence. I can't decide if that concerns me more than when you say daddy like. I can't decide which bothers me more because neighbor like has implied voyeurism in there, which I'm not keen on. Sure, sure, but no, no implied incest. So <laughs> there's a lot of things to me, you know. Yeah, so yeah, you gotta take the smooth with the rough. It's, fun. <laughs> yeah, see, it's a wash. See, Cole like Cole like neighbor like because it you know encur- <laughs> it, it encourages a sense of community. Like caveman Cole. <laughs> If if more neighbors liked and less neighbors hated, yeah, you know, world 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 would just be a slightly better place. But like next time you have to interact, like you interact with your neighbors sometimes, Cole. Like next time, yeah. like you know, your neighbor, like you know, like some mail got left up at your house and they give it over, bring it or to their house and they bring it over to you. Uh-huh. Like give it, please give it a spin in under real world world conditions. I think it's ready for like human prototyping. Yeah, like just, just like you know, he gives you your package and you're just like neighbor like. <laughs> And see, see how he responds because I really want to see if it flies. You know, my neighbors just added a hot tub in the backyard, and I think that uh, like Ooh, if there's ever, like. if there's ever been a time for neighbor like, I th- I think it's I think that uh, there's a calling happening. It's definitely here. 2018. Like this, that is this is the year of neighbor like. Fuck <laughs> Waluigi, like we're, like bringing it back, baby. Oh man, but it, okay. So so run, run me through these. You had five. Clam yep. it. But it's so kind of cool. Angry. Clam it. Cl- okay. you know, so that's when, when things are bad. Like I watched a video today where somebody was complaining about the new Jurassic Park. And they're like, why are all the dinosaurs the heroes? And I'm like, clam it. <laughs> like, that's the cool part about these. Like, what's wrong with you? Um, and then if something bad happens uh, to you or like you're just like, oh, you know, I, I can't, like I'm going to go have to get, you know, a, 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 like something like get my blood drawn or something. You can be like, uh, but it's, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> you know, it's kind of cool. The needle goes in and stuff. They pull the blood out. Okay. Um, there's that. There's neighbor like. Okay. Uh, there's, but that's living. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's what that's when you just have to throw your hands up. That stuff. Yeah. And then there's the the, the one we we just we just came up with it. It was, it was the fifth one. We just had it. Um, <laughs> I can't. I can't recall. Those are those are the four I I, I came to this podcast knowing, but we yeah. just came up. <laughs> I, it, it's kind of, getting more and more acute the the, the microphones yeah, sucking our memories out yeah yeah the, the uh watch out wasn't it, it was your it was your wish master one wasn't it oh yeah our wish master reporting for duty oh yeah yeah, wish, <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you, yeah wish master reporting for duty so if anyone just like hey man can you grab me a pepsi you know wish master <laughs> reporting for duty you know, and then they might think that the Pepsi has like a, a dark side to it as well. Ooh, that, that's yeah. what I was going to question. Is it does it have to be a sincere wish fulfillment, or do you have to imply that you've done something sinister? I think you have to imply <laughs> you've done something sinister. Yeah, like you, you just it's you only deliver open to Pepsi's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I truck in open containers exclusively <laughs> as the wishmaster. As a wishmaster, <laughs> I truck in exclusively in open containers. <laughs> it's like a client testimonial. <laughs> but the wishmaster guarantee <laughs> so, so, sorry i didn't mean it. so i feel bad making you repeat all of those but i i feel t-shirts coming so no no i, I i'm because uh, 
it's been a it's been a long time since doesn't seem so smart to me, right? Right, right. Like, and, and it just like, I feel like I am due, mm-hmm. and I think that it will simplify my communication in daily life if I break down a lot of my words to those five mm. catchphrases. Like, mm. I've already got five of the main emotions covered. Yeah, uh, so I definitely think that, like, you know, if we're looking at the the, the semiotics of Wishmaster reporting for duty, I think that it definitely it, it, it's it's double edged, right? It says like, hey, I'm here, I'm here to serve, but you know, you should think okay. before you ask. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, just understand that, like, you know, when, when you're relying on other people, it's a little bit the opposite of neighbor. Like when you rely on other people, you might get something you didn't intend. You know, you might get like yeah. a like a Gontaro dim kind of thing going on. I can, I can name multitudes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start using it since I do want that like that idea that it kind of treats teaches a lesson like next time somebody on twitter just asked me to fucking google something for him i'm just gonna gonna google like the you know here's just a big pile of piss or something and be like wishmaster reporting for duty and then just send them that link you know because people should really do their own googling yeah see because let me google that for you is passive aggressive and i hate it but we need something that is just actually aggressive yeah yeah aggressive aggressive (laughs) because it's pretty annoying yeah you know you you can you can just look it up it's right there in the thing (laughs) I'm pretty sure you could probably buy the rights to the Wishmaster at this point. That can't be that can't cost too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just do an ant, like do a with the money I have on hand, like do a new Wishmaster sequel, <laughs> and it's all and like the word, and it's you know mostly tops out at opened Pepsi's and like bad Google <laughs> searches, <laughs> like you know no, nothing too much worse than that because I don't want to like the Wishmaster got into some twisted shit. I don't yeah. know if you guys know about that about him, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sew anyone's eyelids shut. Mm. Yeah, he's not really the friendly public face you guys want for duck feet. No, <laughs> that was our mascot. That would be just like Cole Wishmaster. <laughs> <laughs> just like just the duckfeet.tv logo, and then the Wishmaster like creeping over the, <laughs> the side of the D or whatever. Like, ah, <laughs> I would buy that T-shirt. <laughs> that, that's a very good like. Man, I, I'm going to refresh my uh, my memory on what the Wishmaster looks like as a character because he's a real demon. Yeah. Yeah. He's a real, he's a real goblin figure. There's a, there's a lot of corners on that face. Yeah. Ooh, he's, he's, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's extremely PS2. He's like a PS2 uh, Soul Reaver game. Yeah. Yeah, he, that's what I was going to say. He's like a Soul Reaver boss. He looks, yeah. he looks like Satan did in the, the Tenacious D movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so this is the mascot, like just this guy creeping over the corner of the door. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could orchestrate a Wishmaster takeover of the DuckFeed.tv site. Yeah, <laughs> it's Wishmaster week. Like the, uh, the implied third part, third host in every show. You yeah. just have to do it with that before this episode drops so everybody's incredibly confused. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> Wishmaster is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know how to take us back on track or if that is the right thing to do. We like, could just take a hard, hard left segue and just start talking about how in that, this game you're given weird tasks by your boss where they'll approach you and say, you need to get your music to 20% or you're fired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then when you get, just... you get that 20%, he then comes back to you and says, there's no reward for this. Experience is the only reward. And I was like, is this another biting criticism of the games industry or just M. Dickey being M. Dickey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's, it's one of those, like, beautifully artless, like, sentences that come in this. You know, like, this this reduces game development down to, uh, as, like, the least expressive work ever. Like, the idea of, like, you have to get your music to 20%. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, how how was that music? Oh, it was up to 20%. <laughs> you know, it's, it's such a, like, robotic and stiff way to, <laughs> to describe art. It was very yeah. funny to me. Yeah, I think you build up these dials, and then you. What the options don't even make any sense. The option is identify, which <laughs> mm-hmm. makes your boss come and it's like, which one of these already existing games have you just made? And I was like, this is kind of weird. Like, I, I, could, I can decide whether it's Pitfall or Breakout or something else. It's like those are very different games. Uh huh. I I love the um the fake game that's on the screen, uh that looks like Ooblets or something. <laughs> that, that, like while you're actually playing so the boss came over like i think it was identify the boss came over and yelled at me because he's like you're tell- telling me this game is ready to ship keep working on it <laughs> and I, I didn't know that identify meant that but he just came over and watched my like three little concept drawings of ooblets that like my weird <laughs> you know extremely fat pimply avatar was trying to ship i was into it like yeah but yeah I didn't get a – and, like, the, the first – so out of all the M. Dickey games, this is the one I feel like if I spend enough time with, I might be able to get into because I like games that do this but better. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? 
like I like a lemonade lemonade stand based on game dev stuff. Like those are fun mm -hmm. to me. This does not feel like a very good version of it. Yeah. So uh, similar to, you know, before where I said, oh, he doesn't get the benefit of the doubt on the wrestler coming out as gay thing. Like mm -hmm. the idea of a game development game where you have to take your studio's reputation into account, that seems that seems fine, right? Like I think that's mm -hmm. an invisible stat in game dev story, right? Like if you've made good games before, people are more likely to come out and buy. Uh in this, I cannot give him the benefit of the doubt that he is not trying to like like sour grapes it or do something like that. Like I need to make a yeah. I need to make a simulation where even the mightiest game developers such as Shigeru Miyamoto or weirdly Steve Jobs is in here. I, like, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> you know, but just like where 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 everybody has to deal with being a reviled internet figure like me like that, me that does feel very similar actually yeah. yeah and when you when you look at like the essay that he he wrote about this and you look at the interviews and stuff with him like that feels like it's almost an inevitable conclusion <laughs> of this because the essay he wrote about it on the page like the little in between paragraph things like really does talk about this like it is the most original and like brilliant idea in the world <laughs> and then in that uh ars technica interview thing he talks about how much he values criticism, but he feels like nobody gives him good criticism <laughs> um, and, and how it's just like they're just like, it's shit, mate. You're a cunt is, is what, <laughs> what he says. And no one actually like sits down and engages with his uh, with his actual criticism or criticizing his work. And then he does something like this that is so like outwardly hostile mm -hmm. and feels like as a response to. A, a serious persecution complex, I guess, is my yeah. point. Like the reason why I think that this probably is something like dra trying to drag everyone else down into the dirt is that he feels like he has a real chip on his shoulder about the fact that like it's not like it feels beyond engagement. Like criticizing an M. Dicky game doesn't feel like something you could actually. What's the vocabulary for that? <laughs> like, well, you yeah. know, it's really awkward. It doesn't control that well. It doesn't look good. Yeah. Uh, your sense of humor is 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 sometimes you know. <laughs> Funny, funny, not on purpose, but uh, oftentimes it doesn't feel like, you know, it's trying to be funny when it's trying to be serious. You know, uh, the, the mechanics are inscrutable. Like there are ways to actually say what's wrong with these games. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But it just doesn't it feels like we're past like base principles. You know, it's, it's like building a house on the ocean. Yeah. And then like criticizing the wallpaper as it's like sunk <laughs> at the bottom of the, the ocean. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> I think his approach to wanting criticism is the same as when my grandmother goes to the doctor. She just wants to be told how healthy she is. She doesn't want wow. to actually hear anything wrong. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's go. the same thing. It's like, tell me how good my game is. Criticize me. Is it, that's not criticizing yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. His follow-up to the U Testament about the Prophet Muhammad, I'm sure that's incredibly sensitive. And... Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But he has a very Trump way of wording things where everything he does has to be the most groundbreaking or original and it's like you're just doing the same things in the same engine and changing yeah. it from music to games or wrestling to boxing or being in a prison for some reason <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, it, yeah it, it's pretty it's pretty misguided is the the most the best thing i can say about this this figure like i'm self-conscious about covering material that we already covered when we first learned about him mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but and I'm, and I'm sure we said this but like is it kind of impressive that this guy just does all this stuff himself and has always done it all by himself? Like, yeah. sure. You know, yeah, kind of. Like, the, the, that's kind of neat that he's just this weird uh, maverick, you know, that kind of this. It's mildly respectable, but it just, it's really hard to get past the fact that the end results are so dumb and bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. In there. So. <laughs> Did you guys yeah. have better luck running this one than the U test one? Because remember, you had like four frames a second or something the last something. time. Well, you gave good advice about running this in windowed mode. That helped mm -hmm. out tremendously. Yeah. Uh, just because something about this engine, like, you know, I, I'm fine with a low frame rate. However, the input is pinned to it in this in a way yeah, that is yeah, really exactly. bad. Yeah. So, like, I, clicking on the same button five times um, until, you know, so it wouldn't register. So, yeah, that, yeah. that's a tip for everybody. Run this in windowed mode. It's a different executable. Because I actually Googled um, if there was any fixes, and there was a response from Matt Dickey himself saying, oh. I can't even make it work in Windows 7. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Set it and forget it. Yeah, the, um, yeah mine kept crashing uh, to desktop when I first started it, and then eventually just didn't. So I, I don't really know what I did to make it work, but... It was um. Can we? Can we this is this is changing the subject. But I just was reminded of something looking at his uh his thing about this. Um, one of the things that I think actually like I don't like it. I don't think it's good. 
But one of the weirdest parts of this game is that um, it has a soundtrack like when I made Game Maker games, uh -huh. which is that they don't uh, songs. So they're all just like actual songs from video games, but they don't. It's one loop of the song and doesn't they do not stop during scene transitions <laughs> necessarily. So you'll like listen to the, you know, the Lost Woods theme from Zelda three. And then once it goes through that thing once like the 40 second just one version of the loop it will stop and become doom music <laughs> in the middle of of you know another game that you're playing it's really weird yeah well, what i think is happening is that the music track just starts when you start the game because um the loading screen like his publisher thing or whatever has a loop from uh, uh loving colors cult of personality i love that actually the <laughs> <of this>. yeah <laughs> which is very funny um <laughs> Actually, the opening of us, yeah. What? <laughs> I, <think so. laughs> uh, I somehow woke up, Siri. I don't know what you mean by I love that actually, the opening of us, yeah. <laughs> sure, let's search the web for that, baby. Yeah, do that. <laughs> okay, and it's a, it's a bunch of Wikipedia stuff for love, actually. Of course. No. Yeah, no, but, but it starts with that, which we can talk about that. Like, a pending cult of personality to yourself kind of feels like... Uh, uh, asking your family to play uh, Frank Sinatra's "My Way" at your funeral. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> except kind of while you're... giving yourself a cool nickname, it's like, uh, you don't get to do that. A little bit, yeah. Um, but you know, uh, you you can skip that flash screen after the whole game loads, and it still it still keeps going. So I don't think mm. that I don't think that the music is tied to anything that happens in the game. I think it is just on a loop that just starts. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And, you know, like, I, I can, <laughs> I'm going to sound like an IP lawyer or something like that. It really bugs me that he just uses music and assets from other games. Like, if he's trying yeah. to make himself a, make himself out as the Sauteur, like, that's that's somebody else's thing, you know? Yeah, like, yeah that's incredibly weird. Yeah, using, using company names and using logos, whatever. If you're going for verisimilitude, that doesn't bother me too much. But just like, yeah, let's just pull in the uh, the Caterpillar uh sprites from mario so we can make this snake game like i don't i don't know it just seems yeah. it, 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 it seems lazy to me again like mm. everything about this like the actual game itself is lazy if he's looking for actual criticism of these things he really either a ought to put more effort into it or b stop putting himself at the front of it because you know the way that he leads with his own personality on this makes it so and it's impossible <laughs> yeah, and a stupid hat. It just it makes it impossible to say to say anything about this without talking about him himself, you know? Mm. Yeah. He's... Yeah, I think yeah, I th I think the idea behind having the just all the asset stuff was since this is him his little uh uh homage to making games or whatever that he would just play with all the toys. Right. And that uh it just ends up making the whole thing a lot more surreal and off-putting than anything else would. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, like, he, it's not like he always uses asset flip stuff. Like, it's, you know, occasionally that kind of stuff happens. But most of the games that I've seen, he makes all his own stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's definitely intentional that he's doing it with this one. Yeah. Um, it, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't, whatever effect it was trying to achieve, it does not achieve it. Yeah. Like, that's the kind of criticism he wants. Like, I should send him a, a letter and make his day and be like, <laughs> you know, like, I, I get that you were going for something, but it didn't come across at all, Mr. Dickey. No. You know? Oh, he will argue with you. <laughs> 100%. But that would be pretty fun. Like, I read on the air and stuff. Like, throw <laughs> oh, that in the content. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. you would finally get a response to an email. <laughs> yeah, finally. Yeah. I, I haven't, I've still, still batting zero. The, um, <laughs> and having an ongoing feud with M. Dickey, uh, <laughs> as much as that's like a lot of energy, like, would be a nice recurring segment for this until he until he took his like fifty million dollar sales like he just buy and sell me yeah. at this point like we we keep talking about this guy but he's immensely successful and rich yeah. and uh, and that makes this very hard to to conceive of this world where that happens yeah. you know feels cosmically unjust <laughs> the, the reviews for his mobile game are insane as well it's all people giving three stars and saying why don't you add nine thousand more things and then i'll give you five stars and then he gets super <laughs> yeah. upset about it <laughs> i fucking i hate that i hate when reviews of apps or i guess like i guess like like customer reviews of anything are like this this review is temporary if you change if you if you meet my demands then i shall deign to go back and revise it <laughs> upwards oh yeah because they, they they all want online multiplayer from his like mobile wrestling game. It's like, he doesn't have servers for that. <laughs> yeah. He barely has code, let alone net code. 
It's just yeah, slightly yeah. updated versions of his games from 2008. <laughs> so, so I'm really curious, Andrew. You mentioned that you're something of an expert on M. Dickey. Like, how did your journey? How did your journey with him begin? And like, what M. are Dickey the highlights? <laughs> yeah, what are the highlights and lowlights of that? It was the very early wrestling games, and he previously had a Rocky game, which I quite liked. And this was in the days of dial-up internet, where it took me several hours to download this Rocky game, which was 11 megabytes. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he kind of gained any kind of notoriety, and I'm, I'm not sure if you guys know this, because he scrubbed it from his website. Are you aware he made a game about the Michael Jackson child abuse trial? No. The the gar- the thing, the Ars Tactica thing ref- uh, mentions a Michael Jackson game he made. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of details, though. I assume it's the same one. It's a wrestling game where you play as Michael Jackson and you beat up the police, the district attorney, one of the kids who accused him, and that journalist who made the documentary where he admitted to oh. hanging out in beds with kids or whatever was going on. Tasteful. And, cool. and it's, the, the write-up for it is so obnoxious. It's like M. Dickey lends some much-needed support to Michael Jackson as he steps into the ring to confront five of his fiercest critics. <laughs> one by one, their selfish agendas will be revealed, and you must silence them with a vicious fight to the knockout. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this, I, is what I, this is what I was wanting to make you play, but it doesn't seem to exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird that, like, so, like, trying to figure out, again, the perspective behind that. Because do you think that that comes from a mind of somebody who thinks that Michael Jackson is innocent? Or does that come from the mind of somebody who just wants to play in the dirt of something, you know, that's controversial, but uh, came up with a really weird angle for it? <laughs> you know, like it, it feels like the second one to me. Like it's like that's untasteful, but also it's just fucking strange. Yeah. Well, well, he you know. seems to have a strange affinity for Michael Jackson generally because I think the whole hat cocked thing is a Michael Jackson thing and Michael Jackson turns up in his games at random when he has no place in them. Right. <laughs> yeah i have no idea i think that i mean it's reminiscent of just a bunch of stuff you saw on newgrounds right you know which leads more to just the being tasteless for tasteless sake but man just like if you are on his side like okay i'm going to be a michael jackson booster which is a position <clears throat> i'm going to do that by making a wrestling game it's just how like it's just like everything being tied back to wrestling before we move off of, off of this i just want to um uh highlight one particular sentence on the uh on the under development thing uh or page rather his is his old essay about himself under character possibilities um the fu- the final uh the, the final sentence here speaking of which uh talking about character customization a couple of new hairstyles help you achieve randy orlon's pointed shave and john cena's wedge mm. <laughs> okay cool in this game about development you can have cena hair <laughs> yeah. no- noted game developers both <laughs> yep Thank God. Yeah, but no, just like a wrestling game seems like such a, an inappro- inappropriate. I get everything about him is just inappropriate. Not from like a, a you know, I'm speaking about like he's feeling a school mom or whatever, but like it just doesn't match. Yeah. 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 And apparently his Michael Jackson game helped to stir up positive headlines too. And I'm just reading an article about him and it's obnoxious. Yeah. Mm. He's just re- he received a letter, a letter from the representative of Michael Jackson describing the game as fabulous. No, you didn't. <laughs> Matt decided to reach out and tell Michael Jackson's close friend Yuri Geller about the game. Why? <laughs> yes, you, you, Yuri <laughs> Geller. <laughs> and it says like Yuri was so impressed he wanted one of his own. And then later on it says Yuri told the Telegraph he had not played any of Matt's games. Yeah, <laughs> none of the stuff happened. No, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> Yuri Geller's too busy suing the Pokemon Company. <laughs> what? A, what a weird thing. Here's a here's an angle to consider. Uh, someone's married to this guy. Can you imagine that? Like waking up and being like, this guy, this is my husband. He is the father of my child. Here's my child who's going to be raised by this man who's done all these things. I have to introduce this man to my parents who now are, he is their, like their son in law. Like, that's very strange to me. Like the fact that this guy exists in a normal real life fantasy space. Like imagine you'd never heard of him before and you were not involved in games at all. And you were at a holiday, holiday Christmas party. And you met him and like just I was like, oh, so what do you do? And then like he described it being himself like this guy operating in a normal mode at all. 
uh, is really because he's really strange within this game context. But putting him anywhere else doesn't make him less strange. Yeah, because yeah, I had never actually seen him before until the article you're talking about from Ars Technica guy. Because I can't <laughs> disentangle him as a real person. I'd always just envision the dumb, blocky 3D avatar with the crooked hat. Uh huh. So the idea, the idea of him interacting with other people, it's a stretch for me to imagine that as a person and not just him walking up to people and be like, I have made the most revolutionary game about games. <laughs> and on his website, he claims that Under Development has dozens of charming sub-games. It's like, dozens? Nah. <laughs> it has dozens of charming sub-games like those little handheld systems that you buy in a mall kiosk or get as a yeah, fundraiser yeah. reward from school, have thousands <laughs> of games. One games, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wolf. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, on one hand, it does feel cosmically unjust that he is selling millions and millions of copies of this, basically just bottling people's nostalgia for N64 wrestling games, which were fun, right? <laughs> like, so that feels un unjust in a way, but like, I don't know, if he has a kid, I'm happy that his kid is going to be, you know, isn't going to be starving because his dad gets in fights on the internet and gives away all of his games for free. Like, yeah. you know, that, that, that is one less innocent victim of, of, of his complex. But like speaking to like, if you met him at a party, somebody who's in love with superlatives about himself, as much as this guy is, I cannot imagine it's necessarily it's very good. fun to interact with him. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think I yeah. mentioned to you, Colt, once I interacted with him once. Oh Yeah. I read it was the Michael Jackson game because it was free at the time and his wrestling game you had to pay for and I didn't have a credit card and his billing system looked incredibly dodgy so my parents weren't going to go for it. <laughs> right. I guess this yeah. was about maybe 15 years ago, maybe more. <laughs> and I emailed him to see if it was possible to edit the characters in the Michael Jackson game. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he responded effectively. It started off normal. It was like, no, it wasn't really designed for that. It's just a free demo of the other game. I'm sorry you can't play the full game. And... This game is a serious game, and to allow editing would undermine the message. <laughs> the, the, the message of Michael Jackson beating up a teenager. Yeah. Oh, and not just, I mean, like, to undersell it, like beating up people who are uh, taking him to task for, like, you know, like society, in any, any society that exists, what is, you know, has a real shot at the top spot of worst all time crime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, it's it, it sweeping the crimeys every year. It's <laughs> <laughs> victimizing yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. Victimizing children. Uh, Lifetime Achievement Award as mm. far as uh, more <laughs> sins. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. That's, he's, he's just really made this, this hill. This is his hill to die on. Yeah. Like, oh, that's fucking weird, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, in a vacuum, the level where you just beat up somebody called police officer with Michael Jackson might be all right now, but the rest of it is problematic. Like, if somebody wants to make up a game where you just beat up the police, I'm sure people are going to buy that. Yeah. And even as, you know, Michael, you know, it's a little like, like there are moonwalker levels where I'm pretty sure you do that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it doesn't have a stance, you know, right. but that, that's yeah. fair. Like, God, it, you know, maybe it's just one of those things where you believe somebody when they tell you who they are. So he, you know, he like made this song I like, so therefore. <laughs> well, not not just Michael Jackson. Like, yes. Like, yeah. I mean, I believe, you know, <laughs> when Michael, like a bunch of, but like uh, with, with M. Dickey, where it's like, instead of all, like he presents as such an enigma, like this four, four dimensional chess player mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> but in fact, he could just be a colossal piece of shit, uh, <laughs> to, uh, yeah. you know, who is, is doing these things because he believes them, not because he is some kind of, you know, puzzle box. Yeah, yeah and uh, he definitely had his conversations with the hat, like Spider Man, with Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> like there's just a tap out shirt on a hanger on a mirror, yeah. and he's just, he's just a, come on, Mister Diggy, <laughs> make a Harambe wrestling game, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Should, should I look at M. Dickey's Twitter? Oh, I'm gonna. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is he <laughs> Dickey Man? Is he at Dickey Man? Uh, it, it is yeah. at mdickey.com. Uh, there's a okay. there's a link okay. on his uh, on his website. Ooh, his location is listed as uh, uh, top one percent. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> brain. Um, yeah, he's definitely like you know, leaning into, uh, into his bad game reputation. Yeah. 
He has a, a screenshot of one of his games that says, "What will ancient civilizations make of this?" It's like, I have a, some some news for you. I'm thinking they're not going to give a shit about your weird mobile yeah. game. <laughs> Sorry, that traveling war game will be disappointed, but I have thrown in as many references as possible. Yeah. From shields to for the Romans to circular Spartan ones. Thanks, M. Dickey. Whoa! What? What Seven rebel? retweets, ninety-three faves. Good, good, good engagement, M. Dickey. Yeah. He's not getting ratioed very much, so that's good. No, no. What will ancient <laughs> civilizations make of this? Yeah, <laughs> good. Um, the, the, uh... <laughs> he is he has retweeted uh, Diddy saying, "I need complete focus to execute my next move." <laughs> yeah, the, 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 <laughs> A, a, a duo of of giants the these competitors on brain wars genius edition <laughs> <laughs> go head to head oh yeah yeah so uh, the replies to his tweets are insane as well it's the usual i would like to request war elephants it's like yes i'm sure and dickie can code an elephant yep. <laughs> yeah yeah it'll, it'll just be the, exactly the same model as the person except he'll make them gray and be like and he can do suplexes <laughs> yeah 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 the, yeah oh man yeah, this is this is uh, bad, but also boring. Yeah, this Twitter yeah, it's not, as, it's not as fun as I was hoping it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's just, like it's a little, like most of it is just screenshots of his game that's in development, I think, and like pithy little captions on top of it. But he this is the just like a lot of game. murdering sort of native people from the looks of it. It's like, look, here's a knight fighting an Aztec. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's from I one bet. of his mobile games. That's from um, I think Stranded. Uh, yeah. I was looking up. Uh, uh, I think it's called, it's called that. Um, but it, it's like a you end up on an island, and it was like a, a knight hunting a tiger while a Native American is in the in the background. Uh, imagine if they had the courage to publicly ridicule their own hard work. That's the real game development, and they're granting me that they're granting me and denying themselves. <laughs> who, who is it? Yeah, at PAX East, a room full of people were encouraged to heckle my games as part of their worst games ever panel. <laughs> um, poor, poor BB. Uh, um, oh, he he uh, he makes a habit of retweeting Elon Musk. That's fun. Oh, First, that's always a good time. I, I am I am not surprised. He's a real genuine like UFC, you know, fight game fight sport mm-hmm. man. Yeah, like, there's, he, a lot, there's a lot of chat. there's a lot of animations of people murdering one another. Yeah. Nah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody, he quote tweeted somebody saying, talk to people who disagree with you. It's hard to hate up close. And he quote tweeted and said, uh, this is why I do video interviews now. What people say to my face bears no resemblance to what they say behind my back. <laughs> oh, this guy, what is he talking about? <laughs> the, 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 uh, I mean, I keep, we keep reevaluating this guy as a person. Like something that, to keep in mind is this person is profound, profoundly unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like this person. So that, that was in May. Um, I would say roughly like, a sixth of his tweets are about this persecution complex. Like yeah. he's, mm. he's in a constant state of feeling under attack from all sides. Uh, <sighs> so like, yes, he's rich, but it's like the second season of extras. Like he's not happy <laughs> about it. So yeah, he, he seems to be floating the idea of a new Testament remaster of some descriptions. <laughs> allegedly the worst game ever made. And yet there's not a day goes by that I'm not asked to resurrect it. Hashtag <laughs> second coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one's for all the haters. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> oh, he's retweeting some like Breitbart awful people now as well. This is just depressing. Yeah. The more I scroll down, I'm just gonna stop. Yeah. <laughs> sad, sad little man you are <laughs> uh, as a guy. Yeah, uh, um, it's it's a real chicken and egg kind of thing. Uh, which came first, the misery <laughs> or <laughs> uh, <sighs> the misery or the games? Uh, uh, I might be all m dickied out. I think so. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that's exhausted a good bit of what was left from your last. <laughs> oh yeah, no, this this was perfect though. It's been just long enough, you know, that it was time to check in on on, on the boy. We've changed and he's changed. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait a minute. So he has a tweet about this. He's got a screenshot from uh, from under development and the, the the tweet. This is from February. I have fond memories of reverse engineering classics from Tetris to Asteroids for the sub games. It was a good education. You mean the thing that people do when they're like messing around with Game Maker, dog? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it is like sub game makers. Like I remember playing around with Game Maker years ago and it's the sort of stuff I would make where it's like, this is breakout, but it's not quite right, or it's yeah. space invaders, but the enemies are just spaced too far apart to be playable. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. This this, this <laughs> is asteroids, but I couldn't figure out how to do the wraparound. <laughs> yeah. The, um, 
and we, we didn't really talk about this, but on the actual game under development, you can just play all the mini games from the menu if you don't want to play the sim. Mm-hmm. So like if any of these are good enough to you just to play, you can just play a bad version of all these games. Yeah. And they I all was like surprised. That's Sorry, uh, I was, I was going to say, Andrew, like that's a very like astute observation, though, when you say like, oh, you make space invaders, but the people, you know, the, the monsters are too far apart to be playable. Like mm-hmm. all of them have some kind of fundamental misunderstanding of how the original works. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So so for him to brag about how much fun he had, like reverse engineering them and then missing the point of like nearly all of them. Yeah. Like none of them are good uh, versions of, of their of their respective, you know, arcade classic. Um. <laughs> That's just, just fucking sad. Yeah. Like, yeah. No roller coaster. Oh, he tweet he tweeted an image. It is a it is a tortoise. Uh is a tortoise on a skateboard with his hands in his pockets, looking all casual, like, hey, what up? And he's got he's surrounded by these rabbits uh that are in suits and uh running along trying desperately to keep up with him. The caption is this is the path of the solo developer slicing through the bullshit with what works for you. I'm gonna take that. <laughs> uh i need to close this because dude is bumming me out yeah, yeah. really really, yeah, really, really like a, a very volatile mix of like wrestling self-pity and daily affirmations <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah well we've learned a lot today <laughs> uh, <laughs> um andrew thank you very much yeah. for, for your support bringing this to our attention i really do appreciate yes, that thank you thank you for letting me give my m dicky anecdotes <laughs> that is yeah, perfectly absolutely fine. yeah i'm very i'm very happy that you uh that you brought your knowledge to bear to help us not repeat ourselves <laughs> yeah. well and in a very real way where else are those m dicky anecdotes gonna go like we, we kind <laughs> that, of that's incredibly true it's like i can't i can't that's not really much of an icebreaker at a bar it's like so yeah. first i need to tell you who m dicky is and everyone just walks away <laughs> Yeah, so it all started in, yeah. The, um, <laughs> what are your feelings on Michael Jackson's guilt or innocence? Don't worry, it will come up later, but not the way you expect. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we re- we really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, this is, this has been super fun. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Is there a place where people, people can find you? I don't really have anything to do. Like, I have Twitter. It's a mcneil 23 but it's effectively just me getting angry about Brexit and occasionally talking to Gary, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> there's not much there. The, uh, I, yeah, yeah, it's it's a, uh, uh, I definitely, I was excited when we were doing the episode where I got the, Cole forward me the email about running this. And I was like, oh, yeah, Andrew. Like, I, yeah. I talked to Andrew on, uh, on the online <laughs> um, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, go ahead and, and, and check out that follow if you if you like this show. So Andrew joined us uh, because he has a patron. Uh, so we really do appreciate the support. If that's something that's interesting to you, if you're listening, uh, the way to do that is go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtve. Yep. And um, uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, tell your friends about the show, leave ratings or reviews. And if you uh, are looking for premium episodes, Patreon is a way to do that. But you can get uh, the older ones by going to duckfeed.tv slash store. Um, mm-hmm. and the, uh, the duck bundle, duck bundle two is, uh, still available and selling strong. So that has a bunch of extra and cool stuff as well. And all sales benefit charity. Mm-hmm. And don't uh, give money to M Dickey <laughs> for us. If you Please. want to support our show, <laughs> yeah. um, don't, don't buy those games. <laughs> so, um, we get a dollar for every dollar you don't spend on his games. <laughs> our, my house is filled with dollars. Help. <laughs> Um, I'm, dying. <laughs> I'm clinging to the ceiling fan help Wishmaster reporting for duty um, <laughs> your money um, so until next time uh, who who is what who is insecure dog <laughs> who's, who's insecure <laughs>